All right, everybody, good evening. Welcome to, I think this is episode 10 now of Beer and Bastards. We've made it to 10 shows. That's pretty good. That's better than that's better than most shows. Um, we have some new we have some new uh, guests here. We have Jacob Zeman and Jacob Westman from the Analytical Conservative, which they admin at our page, the Analytical Conservative, which is easily the best page of all time. Sorry, Grant. Clearly, Grant uh, is uh, an admin at We Are Capitalists, and I'm sorry. What's the name of your page again, Grant? I, I apologize. It's just not cool enough for you, I it? guess. It's called the Modern Libertarian. I can't. A modern libertarian. I always want to say a libertarian mind. It's the M and the L. I can't get it together. I'm tired. I'm <laughs> having a coffee. <laughs> and I put a little bit yeah, of it. Yeah, I'm just, it's true. I actually have to take my tests in school in a separate room. So somebody could okay, I think Einstein was dyslexic, so that you're in good company there. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're two of a kind. Um, Matt Palumbo is not here. He's actually at the roller rink. I guess it was somebody's 13th birthday party. So he was there. He, he's pretty good. The Child Prodigy has written two books, uh, The Conscious of a Young Conservative and In Defense of Classical Liberalism. Is he 13 now? That he was probably, 12. It's, is he it's 12 or 13? 14. I'm sorry. Oh, 14. He's 14. Sorry, 14. Um, so he's there and they're listening to, you know, uh, whatever those G-rated albums are. You know how you buy the album? And they're not the explicit ones. I don't know what they call them now, but that's what he has to listen to. He's really broken up about the uh, One Direction guy leaving. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard. I, I I heard he requested off from school that day. Something he had to like. He was very emotional about it. That's okay. It, I that's understandable. Um, Grant also is that We Are Capitalists, and We Are Capitalists does a lot of work on Beer and Bastards. They have a great page. It's almost as good as the Analytical Conservative. Um, and I'm also an admin. <laughs> I'm also an admin at Unbiased America, which is another great page. But I wanted to get in. It's like it, it feels like an all the analytical conservative show here today. But I want to also Jacob Zeman is the admin at There Exists Logic for All, which a lot of you have probably heard of. Um, and I want to ask you about that, uh, Jay Z, which I'll call you on the show or try to call you, so we get you, we can discern you two. You both Jacobs from one another. Um, how did you start There Exists Logic for All, and do you think there's a lack of logic? in debate go i've always thought that ever since i was probably three years old that i you know that there was a lack of logic but i think it was somewhere around august of last year i you know i spent a lot of time following pages like yours and you know being classically liberal and just thinking that there's a there is a lot of libertarian stuff out there there's a lot of political pages conservative liberal whatever i just wanted to say okay let me you know follow vast array of pages and you know, point out things that are maybe logical or illogical, something that I thought I had a good background in. So I just started the page after a couple of days thinking about it, and that was it. So For, uh, for people who okay. don't follow... For some reason, I, are you still... I'm sorry. I, for some reason, yeah. Spreecast, I, it cuts in and out. Um, I wanted to uh, also ask you, what made you admin as well at the analytical conservative um you know did it give you another outlet what was the purpose I think that of going was, there yeah. yeah so i think um after you were following my page for a few months and you just kind of asked me to join and i was you know thinking about it you know just for a second and i decided okay sure i'll do it and the reason is because i felt that the analytical con uh, sorry the there is logic for all wasn't really getting my voice through as much since I tried to basically be a scorekeeper, just, you know, okay, I'll criticize a liberal meme, a conservative one, a libertarian one. It wasn't as much of my opinion. It wasn't, you know, like a soapbox. It wasn't something where I say, hey, let me write my own articles or posts or pieces. So when you asked me to join, I was thinking, okay, maybe this will be a good chance for me to do something different to just Know, write about politics as opposed to you know writing about logic that you know may not may be political may not be political maybe things that I agree with maybe I don't so yeah so okay. the the post is there on, any truth you know, to the rumor that, that you're the most I'm sorry is there any truth to the rumor that you're the most statist admin at the analytical conservative um I think I'm the second most you must be the most statist I don't know yeah but, that's clearly I mean you're the most statist uh, of the statists. We're all I mean, states. we're all, pr Let's be we're all pretty big, like, uh, 
you know, just boot licking Obama loving sure. status. Like that's. Um, um, uh, so I, I think I may I have um, made some of the more controversial posts because every once in a while, you know, maybe let's say 10% of my posts would be something that say about anarchy or anarcho-capitalists that uh, has rubbed people the wrong way. And that's just kind of the reaction you get from what I would consider more of an extreme fundamentalist sect of religion, which is how I view anarcho-capitalism. Okay. Um, I want to get to uh, JW. Um, you just graduated, was it University of Minnesota? In December, no. with your, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll Minnesota go ahead. State. You can't get these things, I can't get these things straight. Anyway, Minnesota State with your uh, uh, master's in economics. Math. Um, and you've been adminning, you originally admitted with, with me on the Chicago Boys a long time ago. And then we went into, um, we went into the analytical conservative. Um, you, would you, and I've always wanted to ask you this, do you, would you describe yourself more as a libertarian, more as a conservative, or would you be a blend of both? Why or why not? Go ahead. Uh, I would say I'm a blend of both, but I don't really enjoy labeling myself anything, but if I had to, I would say I'm a libertarian. Um, I think it's a mistake to go in and label yourself because I think it ties you to certain opinions of that label. So if I called myself a strict libertarian, I might have to, or not have to, but start making arguments based on libertarianism thought instead of being able to assess each situation, <clears throat> excuse me, assess each situation independently. Um, and when I do assess each situation independently, it seems like I usually side with libertarians. Although I'm a non-aggression principle libertarian. Okay. So what basically what you're saying is you use a system of logic. Rather than up, oh, sorry, oh, there there. we got it back. Yeah, you, you know what, Grant? Okay, are you there, Jake? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, um, well, I missed what you said. I'm gonna, what you I'm, gonna I'm gonna use that same question. I want to address that to Grant as well, because I'm sure his answer may be similar. Grant, or do you consider what do you consider yourself more of? Is there a blend? Do you approach each? Like I think a lot of people on Facebook approach certain uh, uh, policy issues with a platform of one party or another, or they have a caricature of one party or another, rather than looking at it independently and going at it logically. Um, so in that sense, if you had to ascribe a label, I know people, we certainly, we don't like to use labels, but if you had to, would you, well, how would you label yourself and why? Uh, I would have to say probably you know, in, in principle discussions, just about theory, definitely libertarian, very, very libertarian. Um, but in, in reality, I, I understand that we will never be in a wholly libertarian society as much as I would love for it to be. Um, so I would probably say like constitutional conservative, you know, I'm definitely willing to compromise on a lot of different issues. Right. Um, I hit, for example, I hate the FDA. I think they should cease to exist, but I realize it's probably never going to happen. So like why beat the dead horse? Um, and, and, you know, I don't, I'm not going to. Uh, pester someone on a random Facebook thread about like who would build the roads. Like it just, there are more important things I, I <laughs> would want to be concerned myself with. Although I think it's a great, right. you know, great topic to just kind of uh, be hypothetical about. Mm. Yeah, I would agree with you guys there. I mean, I, I don't like to label myself either. I'm a conservative, but then again, I'd like to abolish just about every federal department there is. Eliminate the entire administrative state. Get rid of the F I mean the FDA. Forget about it. That thing is so worthless. It's almost as worthless as the IR IRS. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think at some points as a conservative, I'm more libertarian than some libertarians, meaning that I'd like to have governments compete with one another um, and just stick to the rule of law. I think the rule of law has uh, competition built in. I think it's an entirely classical liberal document, and I think it best protects the free market as well and liberty uh, broadly defined. Um, so there's that. And speaking of which, uh, you know, blowing up all over the Internet this week, and I'd love to get your guys' opinions on this, is certainly from the statist uh, Jay-Z, who will probably, you know, disagree with the law. You know what I mean? I'm just kidding. But um, uh, the RIFRA Act, and Mike Pence is getting a lot of flack for a law that has nothing, absolutely zero to do with your sexual uh, proclivities. Um, 
Jacob, what do you think about this RIFRA law and, logically speaking, the demagoguery thereof um, and most of the rhetoric that comes out of, say, the media and leftist politicians? Um, do you see this as, do you see this law specifically as anything that's discriminatory? And I want you to address the illogic that comes from, that stems from, like, the media and opponents to, to such laws. Essentially, in my view, what they're doing is opposing the First Amendment, you know, freedom of association and uh, freedom of religion. What do you think? Right. Okay, so I guess we should start with what the law is and what it is not. So you're right that it includes absolutely no references to sexual orientation or, you know, discriminating against people or not, you know, you know, not letting people into your restaurant. This law does not talk about anything like that. It is mostly an extension of the, the federal law. And you're also correct about that. And I think that's important. So I think we should look at, you know, how the law is similar to the federal law and where, you know, where it differs from that. And you know, there, there are positives and negatives about it. But one thing that it is not, it's not an anti-gay bashing law. And I should say, I do think that the freedom of religion, you know, the, the federal law in this country is wonderful. Religion works fantastically in America much better than it does in Europe or the Middle East and I'm including Israel in the Middle East. You know, religion in America is far better than any of those countries and that's because of our, you know, our constitutional rights. So I think the parts of the law that you know, defend that, that basically reaffirm what the federal law is, are great. Now there, there are some parts in this uh, this Indiana law that try and define religion too broadly or you know, religious acts too broadly that could cause an issue and maybe you know, misinterpreted down the line. Say that there there is no formal definition of what a religious group is. Um, different private uh, organizations can sue each other without the the federal government being in there. So there there are some questionable parts of the law, but my feeling is that most people don't understand it. Most people uh, haven't read what this is actually about. They just see you know, simple short memes on the internet saying, you know, Indiana is now trying to put blacks and gays and Jews, you know, back to the 1940s or something, which is just not happening. Okay. Um, <clears throat> same question to you, JW as a libertarian or someone that generally will follow libertarian principles, do you have a problem with this law? And I just want to, just so people know, the RIFRA really just is a defending civil rights, meaning that it doesn't, it has little to nothing to do with, with, with gay relationships, but more so to do with people that have, uh, that, that don't necessarily have recourse when somebody demands a service from them. It could be a Jewish doctor where somebody comes in and demands an abortion from a Jewish doctor and they would rather not do it. Things like that. It has little to do with um, discriminate, discrimination uh, broadly defined, meaning that, and moreover, there has to be substantially, it has to, a substantial impediment has to be proven, so you can't just blithely discriminate against somebody. That's also written into the law. So basically, it protects the civil liberties of religious peoples, uh, essentially. Um, and Jacob, would you disagree with the law? And to elaborate, as an economist, what would best protect people? Is, there really, is it really necessary for any, any of these laws and what would best protect people without law in a mark in the market economy? Well, I do not disagree uh, with the law at all. I think people should be able to associate with whomever they please. Um, if I don't want to associate with someone, that I should be my choice. If a business doesn't want to associate with someone, that should be their choice. Um, as far as how to protect this in a market is their reputation, of course. Um, if there is a company that is blatantly discriminatory. I think the best thing you can do is go out and show the public that this, what this company is doing is discriminatory. They're bigots, so to speak, if they are. Um, and if there's enough public uh, opinion against it, then they're not going to get any business. They're going to have to change their ways. And then there's going to be a hole in the market for them and someone else will be able to open up a shop that will serve to these people and customers will switch uh, where they're going for um, their business. So. I don't, I don't think you need a law to necessarily stop people from doing this. I think if we actually had a free market, 
it would it would all sort itself out, and I think we've seen that over time. I don't have any remember any examples off the top of my head, but I know when I read Milton Friedman, one of Milton Friedman's books, he discussed this in depth. So uh, just the free okay, market. Okay, so you're clearly a right wing zealot. Oh yeah, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. So you're saying that the market would do it, like you know, like if somebody was denying service to somebody else that was willingly willing to pay money for a service, that somebody else would see that in the marketplace and be, God, oh, I'll take your money. You know what right. I mean? Well, it benefits me. I don't care. Well, that it's clearly is. a crazy notion. I so. mean, it, I wouldn't go to a restaurant that's uh, owned by a racist who turns away other races for no reason. I, I would, I wouldn't want to give them my money, and I don't think many people would. So if you get that out there, that people are, they are, for example, a racist. I think enough people would not go there. Right. And would hurt them. Exactly. So they pay the costs. They they alone pay the costs for their racism. Well, that and if you if you do make it a law, then you're really saying, um, you're kind of almost forcing customers to go there because if this company right. is uh, exactly. the only one there and they don't go out of business and this racist owns it and you force and you, you make right. them provide the goods, then I mean there there might not be a place for a second uh, store. So <clears throat> right. It's true. And I, moving on, and I want to get to you, Grant, on this a similar point. I mean, there's a federal RIFRA law that Schumer introduced in 1993, or uh, 91, perhaps, I'm sorry. And 19 other states have the same or similar law. People will say, oh, it doesn't involve corporations, or give me a break with that. It, only people can discrim or, would discriminate, or their civil liberties can be protected. So that has, I, I don't get this corporation argument. I never will. Um, but to you, Grant, what is discrimination? I mean, uh, if you, I know that most people, when you go to a restaurant now, you'll always see a sign or any place that we we reserve, we reserve the right to refuse service to anyone, um, people without shoes, people without T-shirts. Um, they just, you know, is that discrimination? If I somebody comes into my business or my property, they don't have shoes or a shirt on, I clearly I'm discriminating against them as opposed to other people that do have a shirt on. What is discrimination? Um, do you think people conflate it with prejudice and bias? Um, I mean, what are we really getting at here, and what role does the government have to play in any of this, to be honest with you? I mean, I, what do you think, Grant? Can you hear me? I don't think you can hear me. Hello, Grant. Well, that's embarrassing. Um... <laughs> I don't know if he's just if he's just chatting with people and he can hear me, but I doubt he can hear me. Uh, he chatted. Yeah. Uh, can anyone hear Will? So, Why don't you, Jake? Will. Did you hear the Jay Z? Did you hear my question? Uh, yeah. Why don't you take that and then I'll see what, I'll see what Grant's doing. Okay, so I mean, from my perspective, I I kind of agree with uh, what Jacob Westman said is if. If someone says, you know, uh, I don't want, you know, blacks or gays or Jews or Hispanics or whatever in my restaurant, then put it on the window. Let me know so I won't give you my money. Um, now, as opposed to in general, what constitutes discrimination? That's, I mean, yes, you are discriminating against someone who's, you know, walking in without a, a shirt on, but. Most people wouldn't consider that analogous to say, you know, I'm not going to serve lunch to someone who's black, right? Because that, there's a huge difference between those two. I mean, anyone can walk in without a shirt on. It's obviously, you know, disrespectful in most restaurants, but discriminating against someone based on, like, the color of their skin, their ethnicity, you know, th things like that is, I don't think should be acceptable at all in, uh, in our society, so, and that, that's also something that those people can't change about themselves. They can't just all of a sudden say like, oh, you don't like the way I look, fine, I'll change it. So I, I don't think that there's much of a good analogy between uh, saying no shirt, no shoes, and no blacks, so. Right. Um, I'm just okay. gonna pop in right here really quick. Um, Jacob Westman, to your point about the market, uh, and Reason actually published an article on, on, on their blog today about a pizza restaurant, ironically enough, in Indiana, 
who said publicly that they wouldn't host a gay wedding, and then they got blown up on Yelp about it, uh, and apparently it was pretty damaging to their business because they issued an apology the whole nine yards. Um, but a lot of the a lot of the talk that I've been hearing about this law is that it's it's intentionally meant to discriminate against gay people. My my big two problems with that is I don't see gay people being discriminated against on a large and wide scale basis that would justify some sort of heavy handed interventionist law. Um, and the second thing I have a problem with it is if, if the so how is the solution to discrimination to say uh, you know what let's let's address discrimination by forcing bigots to accept our sales dollars yeah, as what as what Jay Z said like. I, I don't want a racist to take my hard-earned money and profit off of it. I would rather watch him suffer into bankruptcy. Uh, and then the the other big problem I have with people who are opposed to this law, I'm frankly, I don't even think there should be a law in the way to begin with, um, it, is that they're comparing it to Jim Crow, and that's just, I mean, that just doesn't even make any sense. How how do you draw that conclusion? That's institu that's government institutionalized violent segregation. Uh, that's not simply saying you're free to do whatever you want, whatever you want. Um, and then I just want to conclude on this by saying that Bill Clinton signed a very similar law uh, in 1993. Um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it, it had the same sort of it was um, nomenclature to it, like religious freedom protection kind of deal. Uh, and it, I was think it was a federal out the name. You know, they hear religious freedom and automatically think bigots and racists and uh, homophobes, which is, again, just grabbing at straws really right and, and and to grant's point it was a federal riffer law that just it just basically it was like a um, how do you say it it just backed up the literally the first amendment um also to his point on you know having bigots serve bigots it's like well who's bigoted here um you know if i'm a if i'm a doctor i'm a catholic and i'm against abortions and somebody comes in as a doctor and requests an abortion and i say no and the government coerces me into doing so. At what point are we being? At what, what point are we discriminating or being prejudiced or being biased? My faith dictates that I don't, I can't kill an unborn child or kill anything. Um, and then to have the heavy hand of the state come in and tell me I have to do it, I think is 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 oppressive and tyrannical. And I, the whole point of the, of this nation is to prevent things like that from happening. I think we're getting so far away from our founding. It's it's ridiculous. Um, well, on that though, I, I do have to say I don't think that it's very realistic since you know, abortion abortionists do abortions. Uh, you, you, I don't think anyone goes into a, a general physician and demands an abortion. I think it's a specialized uh, scale. Well, uh, it's happened in hospitals before. There's been doctors that have declined abortions many times. Not many not many doctors will do abortions to be honest. Um, what if that what if that changes? What if I'm a doctor that clearly states I don't want to do abortions, but now you have to. It perhaps happens ahead of time. It doesn't have to be in that situation. I believe some 90% of doctors refuse to do abortions. Um, I'm not sure on the number, but I don't. I just don't think it, you can use that case. You could use it as, um, you know, what if it's a Muslim? Uh, what if it's a Muslim bakery? And I say, you know, I want you to, you know, give flowers to my to my gay wedding. And they say, well, I don't really agree with that. I don't want to. You know, at what point does this begin and end? I don't. I don't understand. And what? In what context? It really. The market can decide for itself. Um, or, or maybe, I don't uh, think it has anything. Sorry, maybe it's a you know, Muslim yeah. restaurant and you're, you're forcing them to make bacon or something or pork. Right, so, but that would be. Well, but see, that that wouldn't be okay. I actually made that point to someone, uh, and, and they made a good point. So if you walked into a Muslim bakery and, and you said, "Okay, I want you to make me a bacon cake." Chances are they probably don't have bacon to begin with, so they can just say no. Um, but I think um, Michael Lee over at Being Liberal, Liberal Logic made a good point. What happens if I walk in and, I, and I'm a neo-Nazi and I say, you know what, uh, if, to a Jewish baker, can you please make me a cake with this big swastika on it? Under this law, you can't say, I say no based on my religious beliefs. I mean, granted, you probably, I mean, most of us would probably say no for other reasons, but you couldn't say explicitly because of my religious beliefs, I'm not making this cake. Right. No, that that that's part of it too. That certainly you can you you can come up with a million scenarios. It does. You can scenario this thing to death. But what this really comes down to is just basic civil liberties. Um. You know. You could look at it. What if I have if I go into a Muslim uh, bakery and I want them to cater my communion, but they don't believe in uh, you know a, a Christ as savior, and they say no. 
um, you know, can, can, can government force them to do it? You can go, you can get crazy and go down a rabbit hole with these scenarios. It's ridiculous. This, the law bottom line has nothing, absolutely zero to do with discriminating and everything to do with giving those people who feel like their religion's being trivialized or things going against their uh, religion a, a day in court. Um, uh, and, and ultimately the decision comes down to a judge. So basically what this is doing is giving them a little bit of due process here and it has little to nothing to do with uh, discrimination. But that gets also, I, just, I don't understand, there's just been so much demagoguery and flat out lies about it. Um, now you have this other, there's this guy who, in Alabama who passed a law who's being incredibly cowardly about it. Um, and, and, and Republicans tend to do this all the time. They tend to apologize for things. It's like, oh, I apologize for protecting civil rights and civil liberties, rather than elucidating what the law actually does. And Mike Pence tried to do it numerous times with that little creep, George Stephanopoulos, kept asking gotcha, I mean, they literally ask gotcha questions. It's, uh, it's, it's the quintessential, you know, um, uh, you know, quintessential gotcha questions every time. Um, that gets me to my next point. Do you, I think there's a rift between the media and academia and the intelligentsia and everyday people. Um, I don't think, I think more people would agree with this law than the media lets on or academia lets on or just, a, or the intellectual class in, in general. Do you think I'm right about that, uh, Jay Z, or do you think I'm I'm off base? Okay, can you rephrase that? Or, um... Yeah, uh, in so far as I think there's a rift between everyday people, like the everyday American, and the media, and the media has the loudest voice, and they blow these problems up with such illogic and demagoguery that a lot of the times uh, Republican politicians, in particular, and conservatives and libertarians, are fought. Are, are, are you know have to fight off caricatures made by the media rather than the actual the actual debate about what the law is about and educating people about what it's what the law is about. Um, do you do you think I do you think I'm right or do you think I'm incorrect? Do you feel that a majority of people in this country are necessarily opposed to this law, or do you think perhaps a, a majority are apathetic? Look, I, I think you are right that people are just attacking straw men all the time. You know, it's really easy to go through political cartoons today and see images of restaurant owners in Alabama putting up signs like it's you know the 1950s or something you know, just trying to discriminate against everyone and people don't understand what the actual law is. And I don't think that's anything new. I don't think this is you know 21st century revolution that somehow people are also in less informed than it used to be. I think uh, the average person just doesn't have any interest in being informed. You know, politics is not something that has a great reward for you know, being educated on things. It takes a lot of time and energy to stay on top of current events and politics, and you, know, you, you don't really get much out of that because your vote typically doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme. So people are thinking, oh, well, if my vote doesn't matter that much, then why would I spend hours a day trying to research every little topic? It's much easier to go based on political cartoons, Facebook memes that you see, something that someone right. else said that you heard, you know, just uh, little bits of information that are easily passed along. And you know, that's just how most people get through the day. And that's the reality of 90% right. of the voter base. Right. And, and, and to that point, or to the, to the question, I see this a lot, not just with the law, where people don't, I mean, look, the law is so convoluted, it's so mired in jurisprudence, is this the federal level, is this the state level, people don't even understand natural law, they don't understand where, where natural law is derived from, a lot of people don't get where the, what the country's built upon anymore, again, we've, we've come so far from it. But a lot of the times I'm getting into debates, and I'm not a genius here, but I, stu I study this in school, and, you know, I research this, and people are just so far off base, and this happens with economics, too, and Jacob, you can, you, Jacob Westman, you can attest to this, because we've been adminning the same page for a while, that a lot of people speak with authority on issues that I don't think they've even done the little bit, the, 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 like, the, the, the most, I don't know, simple research. It's incredible. I mean, you have Google now. You can... A lot of these things you can find in two seconds. Um, do you think that the media plays on this, this uh, sometimes ignorance or apathy, or these, or, or like you know the people's general uh, 
proclivity to jump to a conclusion that they really don't know much about, nor have given it any in-depth thought. And and where do you see this? Like, do you see this as a common problem? I know, perhaps maybe in academia, you see it. Sometimes I see it there too. Um, I would say the media probably plays to the intelligence of the average voter. Um, I think the average voter is probably not mm -hmm. so informed on things, so they don't take the time to Google it. They don't take the time to do their own research. Um, so they can say things that uh, they can get away with that. You can't say to me, I'm foreign border, just like on, excuse me, uh, was it Ed Schultz, that TV show on MSNBC? He, uh, oh. he was interviewing that info, a very well informed, a good argument, a guy, and he just cuts him off. Uh, but I think MSNBC and people like that, they do say things and they make points without, with the intention of, or with, uh, they know that people will not go look it up themselves. I mean, if you look at the, uh, Hobby Lobby, the Hobby Lobby law, when they're going over that uh, birth control stuff, I, I talked about that with a uh, liberal and I pointed out to them that Hobby Lobby is still providing like $17 birth control per uh, prescriptions or whatever and um, various other things that they do for them that Hobby Lobby provides a minimum wage of like $12 an hour and, and all these things that Hobby Lobby does, that's such a good thing and the only thing they knew was that Hobby Lobby was you know, not providing this one thing so they're calling them basically bigots and stuff and I think it's sad that people won't look this stuff up on their own and make their own decision. They just allow the media to do it for them because um, I think it goes back to our right. system. People aren't taught to think. They trust people. Um, call me crazy, but I'm very untrustworthy when it comes to people telling me things. I, if I see a status on Facebook or an article or anything that seems outlandish, I will usually look it up myself. And most of the time, they're either exaggerating the truth or out outright making something up. So... I definitely think the media plays this one. I can't remember the second half of the question. Okay. Um, uh, you know, like when so, we, on, on, like certainly it. online, and we see this, and a lot of people. Go. Yes, um, Grant, go ahead. Go. So, go. <laughs> so it sounds like the question is uh, why do people just sort of believe everything they hear? Uh, I think it's two major things. Uh, one is confirmation bias. Like, a, we are capitalists, we debunk myths that you hear all the time, and one big one is, let's say, income inequality. As soon as someone hears the rich people are making lots of money and the poor people aren't making as much money, suddenly it's like the world is going to end, and, and this must be some sinister plot to oppress everybody, when in reality it's just misinformation for what Jacob Westman said, just for media to get views, you know, it's, for, it's clickbait, for lack of a better term. Uh, and, and also, at the same time, it, it plays into the politician's game of, of sort of this divisive goal where they take the the 99 percent, in other words, all the people that will vote for them, and uh, sort of divide them away from the 1 percent and, and uh, blame the 1 percent as the cause of the 99 percent's problems and they get all the votes for it. Uh, um, so I, I think it's a, a two-sided issue of self-interested media and politicians and also people who just want to believe what they think is true because it makes them sleep better at night and if they're presented with other information well then that's when you get called names like sexist bigot homophobe uh, and all the other uh, uh, ad hominem attacks I'm sure all of you have experienced on the internet okay I don't know. I, it's breaking up so badly. I don't even know if he's done. He's done. He, all right. I'm just gonna start making. I'm just gonna act like I know what's going on from now on. Um, what we're, also, what we're not considering is all this negative media coverage with that law, refer law, which is really a docile law. Um, is that Hillary's out of the news? Um, I mean, here's a gal that wipes her server clean, a personal server that she used for for government business, which literally belongs to the government and the people, just wipes it clean and it's okay, you know what I mean? And, and the whole Benghazi thing, oh, nothing happened in Benghazi, I mean, at this point you can literally ascertain that she just erased the emails because what was on it was going to be far worse than her having to explain, oh, I erased the email, I mean, it, this is, everything that that family ever does is calculated, except for the whole dress thing, that was a, that was a misstep. But um, everything this family does is calculated, and I mean, it's literally out of the news now, and Mike Pence is a bigot, you know what I mean, for signing a law that has absolutely nothing to do with discrimination. So this is how far off track we've, got, we've gotten. 
Um, and part of the media reason is a lot of a lot of leftists will parrot exactly what they hear in the media. And if I if I start to ask them more questions about it, deeper questions, so exactly what they do is just get mad and call me a bigot. And I'm like, well, you really haven't thought about this, have you? You know what I mean? Well, why? And I, you start to press deeper, and literally all they're doing is parroting what uh, you know Ed Schultz says or Rachel Maddow or Brian Williams or any of these fools that they hear on television. And those people don't really know what they're talking about. I mean, you can say the same on the right with Bill O'Reilly, and, uh, you know, that guy is an economic idiot. I don't know if any of you agree with me here. He's also a constitutional idiot. I don't know how people can... I get why they watch him, but man, is he annoying. Um, um, I wanted to move on, though. I wanted to get into kind of like the... I, I know we get into the, ra the race a lot, but, uh, you know, with the addition of Cruz and Rand Paul... Um, and just libertarians and conservatives going at it over Rand Paul, Rand Paul and Ted Cruz, and they don't have a chance of winning. I hear people on the right saying these things, um, uh, and I think they're starting to they, they start to get down, uh, beaten down by the establishment GOP. Do you think that the country's ready for a libertarian conservative candidate? And if Rand Paul were to win the nomination, or Ted Cruz were to win the nomination, do you think they would get the support of both libertarians and conservatives? What do you think, uh, Jacob? Hypothetically speaking, if they win the, G the, the nomination, I don't want to get into if they can win the nomination, just if they do win it. If they do, I do think that there are a lot of libertarians who will not support them. Um, I think conservatives like Cruz a lot. I think conservatives are a little confused about Rand Paul, but they, they might be more enthusiastic about, say, a Cruz than they were about a Romney. As for you know, a lot of libertarians, I doubt that they will vote at all for anyone who's not Ron Paul, which is something that I don't exactly understand since Rand Paul's voting record is like 98% identical to Ron Paul's, but somehow Rand Paul is an evil status and Ron Paul is a demigod. But you, know, you asked about whether people would support them versus whether they will get the nomination. Oh, wait, did we lose Will? There you oh, there go. you go. Yeah. Okay. I'm here. Oh, good. They refreshed. Um, okay, those are good points. Uh, Jacob, to that same question, and I'm probably going to refresh my screen after I ask this question, so I might black out for a second, but the same question, do you think, uh, you as a libertarian, and, and, you know, think of yourself at your most libertarian point. I know we, we use shift around. Could you support a Ted Cruz for president over a Rand Paul per se maybe not over Rand Paul but um, I would definitely support him um, people have to be reasonable in their expectations of what they want to happen with this country Rand Paul is unelectable whether you say this is important or not or if you're a purist or whatever but the fact of the matter is, is if you get someone in there who shows what freedom can do uh, frees things up a little bit and lets the market work maybe or gives us some more freedoms and it's going to open the minds to a lot more people. Uh, you, you can't you can't just go from being this liberal left uh, president and whatever all the support for <clears throat> people like him and Romney and stuff, and then go straight to a Ron Paul. I don't even like Ron Paul that much anymore, but we can't go into someone like that because a lot of people just they think his ideas are kooky. Um, but I could support T Ted Cruz because he's going to, you know, take us in the right direction. Uh, Rand Paul will definitely take us in the right direction as well. I'd be very happy if either of those guys were my president. Um, maybe not as happy as I could be, but I think they would do a very good job. Uh, I think they would open the doors for a lot more debate over freedom versus just this, uh, if you don't agree with us, you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're a homophobe type thing. Uh, I think they can articulate well from what I've seen at least. Uh, they can articulate this, their stances quite well compared to a lot of just these one-line Mitt Romneys who just go out there with uh, one-liners and don't really have any substance. So I think they would definitely right. help us out. That's a good point. And Grant, I'm going to get to you. I want to say that, I mean, a lot of people are worried about a lot of non-trivial things. And you as a libertarian, and you probably see this a lot at the Libertarian Republic and so on. Um, people are concerned. I put a meme up this week on the Analytical Conservative about where the similarities were on issues that are relevant to the voting public, okay? And they're very, they're very much, ex they're very similar. You can actually say that Ted Cruz is, in that view, or more libertarian, meaning that he just wants the full repeal of Obamacare, 
Um, Rand Paul ne hasn't really necessarily supported full on a full repeal of a full repeal of Obamacare. Also, Ted Cruz is fully opposed to tax subsidies. He said so to the Des Moines Register. He said so in Iowa. Um, Rand Paul hasn't gone as far as to do that yet. But people will get, oh, what about the drug war? And, uh, you know, what about same-sex marriage? And they get into things, well, the drug war, that's definitely, you know, I, you could give valid arguments for and against. It's a cost-benefit scenario. But at the same time, our Constitution is in the breach. They're not following the law. Um, I, I don't, I'm not putting the drug war up there with uh, a, a lawless president and an administrative state in the executive branch that makes laws and oppresses people. Um, so, I mean, both the, the, the similarities between Rand Paul and Ted Cruz is that they both support the Constitution and the liberty that that grants people. It doesn't matter whether they, what they think about same-sex marriage or an abortion. What, what I care about is they both support a balanced budget amendment, which would restrict the federal government. I don't see Jeb Bush out there saying that he supports that. Um, I, they're, they're both moving in the right direction. So do you think that libertarians are really idealists at this point? They're looking for their ideal candidate. I mean, look at the things, some of the things Ron Paul says. I mean, they'll never give up their support of Ron Paul, no matter the, the crazy things that comes out of his mouth. So do you think they're, very, they're ideal in what they want? And, do, and, and furthermore, do you think conservatives that, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Ronald Reagan. I don't think he was anywhere near perfect. Um, he's not my god. I think he was a good man and he did great things. I think the same of Calvin Coolidge. But do you think that they need to like like ever his personality and his rhetoric more so than how they govern? Well, uh, I think uh, to your point about the you know the drug war and, and gay marriage and abortion, I agree with you. Gay marriage and abortion at this point is just kind of moot because it's really pointless in the grand scheme of things. I supported any of the drug war and repealing drug prohibition in general only because, as you said. Balanced budget-wise, that is an opportunity for a huge amount of annual savings and long-term savings, which is important. Uh, but to that end, I I'm more of a Rand Paul guy than Ted Cruz. I realize the difference between them is not very much. Uh, um, but I will support anyone who will s close the floodgate and, and actually accomplish net reductions in the size of government. Uh, when right. I say close the floodgate, I mean what you, what, exactly what you said is stop the lawlessness stop the ridiculous foreign policy. I mean, I think we just gave, we just gave Egypt like a bunch of tanks and guns and millions of dollars. And the guy's a dictator. Like, well, what are we doing? And, and then we're going over, you know, we give weapons to some guy in the Middle East, and then we end up fighting those weapons. And then we're like, oh, but they hate us for our freedom. Like, okay. Uh, and, and I do realize that that is a kind of a different issue, but uh, um, that what I'm getting at is, is this lawlessness of just sort of no, no holds, no bars, executive power supported by whoever happens to be in Congress at the time. If it's favored in their party, then that's not good at all. Uh, but I, I do think that a Rand Paul administration would accomplish, or a Ted Cruz administration would accomplish the step in the right direction. As when Jacob Westman said, we're not just going to go from Obama to uh, Ron Paul, like, total libertarianism overnight like what, what do you think you're going to wake up after the 2016 election and, and gary johnson wins and the fda and the fcc is no longer going to exist like that's just that's not realistic so really bringing it up is kind of pointless in the grand scheme of things okay um i'm looking through the questions here i want to get something on here but uh i think uh, taco salad had a good question okay i'm reading that now actually Let's see. McCluskey All right, so I'll put Taco Salad. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. McCluskey loves us now. Don't let him fool you. That's definitely a sock. McCluskey's account is certainly a sock account. It can't be real because that, there's just no way that somebody could say things like this and use that many exclamation points while saying it. It's probably, you know who I think it is? I think it's Kevin Ryan, the admin at UA. I think that's him just breaking <laughs> balls. At this point, I'm convinced that's who it is. Um... What are your what are your what are your thoughts on censoring Facebook uh, between the banning of pages and the passive aggressive not allowing people to comment? I don't know much about that. Grant, do you Grant or, or do you know a lot of? Do they do they do that? I don't. Well, that I don't know. Just recently banned from U.S. Uncut for a comment about uh, McDonald's minimum wage thing. But what I think about Facebook censoring is that Facebook is a private. Oh, well, it's a publicly owned company, but it, it's a it's a Right, pro yeah, it's not a, really. Right. And, and the pages such as, you know, and the Animal Conservative, We Are Capitalists, whatever, um, we, 
we're entitled to, as we've been discussing really for the first half of the show, we're entitled to associate with whoever we want for whatever reasons we want, and it's really not up for debate. So if you want to ban people from your page, if you want to censor people from your page, I think it makes you look like a jackass and, and who's not open to a constructive conversation. Um, but at the same time, I can see banning people who like, you know, come on there and like just spit like ad hominem BS. Um, so are, you, so, are you saying that well, US, U.S. Uncut discriminated? I feel very discriminated against all the time. Yeah. All the no, time. should there be a law? Five months, man. Uh, we need a law. Well, yes. Yes, there, there definitely should be a law only for Facebook to stop discriminating. If you remember, you posted in UA right. about the show tonight, and you had to come up with this ridiculous like idea on like how to how to get around their algorithms. Uh, um, so <laughs> you know, it's a it's a it's a business. If they want to discriminate and associate with whoever they want, I think it's stupid. I'm still going to use it and try to work around it. But um, it, it, in the end, it's the same thing we've been talking about: is the right to associate. It's. I mean, this is it's essentially the same thing. Um, you're discriminating based on people's beliefs, or right? I. I it, it, how is that any different? JW, what do you think about Facebook discriminating based on people's personal predilections or what they post? So we're we talking about pages banning people. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if it's the page that banned. That's what I don't understand. Did the page ban you, or did Facebook ban you? I know Facebook will like remove certain offensive pictures. Okay. But I don't know US who they just... Dis- and I've also been banned from Facebook before for like a 24-hour period or whatever. Right, I've seen that happen. Um, actually, a guy I, a guy I know got banned from Facebook for putting up something that Facebook deemed um, bullying. Um, what do you think about that, JW? I don't have a problem with it. If you're doing something that um, is clearly, you know, bullying someone, I mean, I, th- I think they're within their right to be able to stop you from doing that or ban you for 24 hours and punish you. Uh, or like you were saying, it's a freedom of association. So, I mean, I have no, I have no problem with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Uh, what do you, Jay-Z, what do you think? Do you ban people from their exist logic from, for all? I know at the analytical conservative, it takes a lot for us to ban somebody. Um, I have, do you I, ban? I have, um, Go ahead. No, I have never okay. banned anyone. I have never deleted a comment and my rule is basically the only conceivable way that I will ban someone is if they're coming on just to spam links or insult people or post porn or something. Right. That's never happened, but conceivably if someone just comes on and is obviously just spamming and not responding to a comment, then I would ban them. It's never happened. I haven't right. banned anyone yet. Um, people do you know, argue with me all the time, and I'm thinking that's perfectly fine. People insult me. I leave the comments on there. I don't care. Um, so I, I personally believe in free speech in that way. Okay. So I, I agree. Yeah, it's a private platform. It's a private platform. You don't have free speech on a private platform. You say something stupid. Facebook wants to kick you off. You get kicked off. Go on Liberty Me. You know what I mean? Um, right. You know. Uh, get, get, I, I go ahead. understand from Facebook's perspective where. Sometimes people post videos of kids being, you know, murdered in Syria and graphic images, and I think that's, you know, pretty much inappropriate or, you know, hate speech, things like that. That's inappropriate. And, you know, from Facebook's perspective, I understand why they take some right. stuff down. From a from an admin on just personal page, uh, like I said, I haven't done it yet, but I would probably delete things similar to what Facebook does. But it, it takes a lot to get Facebook's attention to delete something that is uh, offensive. Right. Okay, next question is from Sergio. This is a good question. <laughs> um, I'll get to you guys. I'll answer it. I'll give you my answer, and I'll let you guys riff from there. Um, the most ridiculous case of libertarian infighting that you all know. I'm going to say just about everything on Certainly on social media, there's just on little issues that involve semantics, um, idealism, and you have these guys like Adam Kokesh and Chris Cantwell stoking the fire. They find this little niche in the libertarian market, and they send out their little minions. You know what I mean? And, and, and Tom Woods, to a degree, they send, they're very I- ideological, and they all they do is nitpick on other libertarians, and I don't, I don't understand it. Um, They'll nitpick your views. If you don't fall in line with what one guy said, you're a statist. 
or your uh, what, what's the other words? Oh, neocon. <laughs> they love the neocon. Um, so basically, if you disagree with some, uh, and it's not disagreeing with, perhaps with the libertarian platform, but with um, with like personalities. I see these people adhere more so to personality than they do to say classical liberalism of of John Locke and you know and and Bastiat and so on while they use their names. I, I think it's incredible. Um, what do you think, Grant? And then I'll go around to Jacob and and Jay Z. I'm going to jump in and say that um, the most libertarian infighting I see is on Julie Borowski and the Libertarian Girls pages. Both of them, they get so much shit for being like Republican corporate shills and, and neocon, like hawkish foreign policy and all this stuff. And I'm just like, dude, they're just trying to accomplish net reductions in government. And, and you just want to call them all these names because they gave the wrong hug. Like, what? Like, what? Right. Those, that's a, those are the Kokesh, Cantwell, that's that wing of that libertarian, that crazy libertarian thing that where you, you're not pure enough. Everything's are you pure enough. Ted Cruz isn't pure enough. Uh, you know, Rand Paul isn't pure enough. But somehow Ron Paul, who was in the Congress, who was part of the federal government for years, he's pure enough. I, I don't understand where his purity came from. Um, what do you, J, uh, Jay-Z, uh, I'm sorry, uh, JW, you guys and your names. JW, where do you uh, where do you see a lot of the libertarian infighting, and do you agree? Do you think it's more so based on personalities now rather than actual critical thought? Well, I used to see a lot of it when I was more active on Facebook and Twitter, but lately um, I haven't been posting as much and following as many pages anymore, so it's hard to say on some of it. I don't really read the comments anymore because they're just so frustrating because it is like what Grant said. It's just people bickering over the dumbest things I've ever heard. Um, but one <laughs> of them that really stands out to me is one time a few months, uh, probably a couple of years ago, I pointed out something about Milton Friedman and uh, an anarcho-capitalist Austrian economist told me he is the biggest statist economist of all time. He's a Keynesian. Um, Wait, who is? Who is so some guy on Twitter was telling me that Milton Friedman was just the biggest status Keynesian economist of all time. And I was like, oh, so all those years he spent debating Keynesians and um, pr promoting freedom in various ways and all these other things, they don't count. It's just the fact that he wrote how the Federal Reserve should be ran if it exists. Not that it should exist, but how it should be ran if it exists. And that makes him the biggest status Keynesian economist of all time and did absolutely nothing for freedom. <laughs> And I, I, I haven't seen that very much lately, but that's because I I gave up talking to Austrians pretty much for the most part because there's just no debating them. Um, right. But that one really sticks out to me. And that, and I do think it's a lot about personalities. I think it's this contest to see who's more pure or not. That's, uh, to be honest, I unliked almost every single page on Facebook except for There Exists Logic for All and a few others. I still check in once in a while, but it's because all of these commenters, they just bicker at each other over the most mindless drivel. I just couldn't take it anymore. It really made me lose hope for humanity almost. And Oh, boy, it's frustrating. But it's definitely personalities more than anything substantial, I think, at least. Yeah, okay. I agree. No, yeah. I think that's how we met, too, you and I, JW, was on Twitter. We were... In a debate with like an Austrian over the gold standard or Friedman or something a while ago, and we were just, what is it with? The, I said, and I think I said to you, I don't get Austrians are so dogmatic, and you were like, exactly. And then from then on, it was kind of, you know what I mean? Because I've never really been exposed to that. I had just done a lot of re my own research on Murray Rothbard and all these other guys, and I was I, something wasn't adding up. I wasn't exposed to the social media aspect of Roth, of say like Rothbard and Friedman. I didn't know there were people that were libertarians that were out there knocking Milton Friedman or saying that somehow he supported the Fed and we needed a Fed. I was like, I, ne I never, I've studied Milton Friedman. He's never said those words. He's actually been against right. the Fed, but came up with pragmatic policies to mitigate it, to, to mitigate its problems. Right. Jay-Z, you, know, you run a page, um, you know, and you're on the analytical, analytical conservative and you've come up with some pretty, I want to say maybe hyperbolic posts that have really, really roused the Austrians. Um, what do you see? Like, you know, what's your, what's your problem with say the libertarian movement and the infighting therein? Go ahead. First, I want to say, Jacob, thanks for the uh, the compliment. It's uh, means a lot to me. But so as for the uh, the libertarian infighting, okay. 
in in you know my everyday life, if people ask me, you know, what's your political philosophy, this or that, I typically just say libertarian because it's easier. And uh, by now, I, I see myself as very moderate, um, not so much like you know dogmatic libertarian, but just you know a moderate person who believes in libertarian philosophy, as in you know you don't do something that doesn't interfere on someone else. That's you know. Principle number one that I start with. And I do agree with the rest of you that I haven't seen a problem until I've been on Facebook. And now, you know, in the in the Facebook world, I'm reluctant to associate with libertarians. I don't really like Facebook libertarians as much. <laughs> so, no, it, it is true. And I do remember, you know, the first times trying to argue with uh, someone who was an anarcho-capitalist and you know, trying to, to reason with them and it just didn't seem to get through. After a while I realized, you know, I've used this analogy before where, you know, all politics can be thought of as a religion. It, it touches the same parts of the brain and libertarianism is a religion. Fine. The anarcho-capitalists are the, the radical fundamentalist sect of that religion, which means that they they filter out a lot of information that makes them feel uncomfortable. They call right. you a statist because you're a heretic. That is their word for a heretic. It's just someone that they want to dismiss because you defected from anything that they said, and they don't want to argue against you. And I've seen that a lot, and that has bothered me. And that has mm. almost turned me away from wanting to associate with libertarians at all in my everyday life. Um, right. So, what do libertarians infight over? Whether you Purity. vote Rothbard or Spooner, I mean, yeah. uh, whether you vote <laughs> at all, that's a big issue. I mean, I think even Spooner said, you know, it's okay to vote, but you know, now it's you know, it's not okay to. Uh, right. Know, I think of voting as taking a poll. So from a from like a game theoretic perspective, it doesn't really make much sense to vote and there are you know there there are good arguments for saying, you know, you know, even though you know voting on a large scale makes a difference, just you personally as an individual voting doesn't make a difference. Yes, that is true, but I just see it as, you know, a poll and me putting my opinion down. And eventually someone will take notice. So Right. So Here's another question, and you know, just because it's hard for me to label myself as a libertarian, which I had always done, and I think when I got on, when I got on admitting pages, it's hard to say like, ah, oh, you know, I'm a libertarian, because it kind of it was kind of getting embarrassing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to label, but in reality, like everyday life, when I tell people like, what do you do? I go, oh, you know, I'm an economics, political science major, and you know, I write, and they're like, oh, what are you? Are you a Republican? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't describe myself as a Republican. I'm like, I have more, I don't want to say libertarian because then they get the wrong idea. And I don't want to say conservative because they have no idea what that means. They just think George W. Bush when you say conservative and it couldn't be further from that. So I really don't know. So I just say I'm more of a classical liberal and everyone's like, oh, cool. You know, <laughs> so no one, <laughs> no one gets it. So I like using that one and they hear liberal and then they don't bother me. Like, I don't want to get into a debate over supply and demand because I said I'm a conservative, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have to draw up diagrams, show them what dead weight loss is, show them, you know what I mean? <laughs> or talk about price floors and price ceilings because they want to get into minimum wage. I could show them a million times. I, I've drawn, I literally will draw this out in a bar napkin when I debate people to show them what happens at a price ceiling. I'll even throw consumer surplus and producer, producer surplus and I'll do everything. It doesn't matter. So I can't, I just say classical liberal, I'm done. I'm done with that. What do you guys say? Like, Grant, when someone asks, go, Grant, you go first, I'll get to you guys. I, I name my page. I, I love the name Classical Liberal. I think it's great. But unfortunately, somebody, Palumbo, already took that name, being Classically Liberal. So I went with the modern That was Corey. Just, Corey, whatever. Uh, they're the same people anyways. They're the same person, yeah. <laughs> So I went with the modern libertarian just because I thought it kind of evoked the uh, idea that uh, uh, someone has evolved past this dogmatic 
you know, Rothbardian libertarianism that was just like, let's privatize the courts. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's the name I chose when it comes to, if someone were to ask me what political belief you associate with, I'm with Jay-Z just saying libertarian, moderate, you know, or moderate right. libertarian, whatever you want to say. Uh, but I do think, I do, whenever you tell someone you're libertarian, Nine out of ten times, you get an eye roll. And I'm just like, all right, right. I stop this. <laughs> <laughs> and Jay Z, what do you when when you're talking to somebody and you tell them, no, I run a page, or I don't know how you get into it. I'm sure being a statistician, people may ask, you know, what got you into stats, or what got you into logic, and then or whatever political uh, uh, whatever political activities you're engaged in. But what do you tell people uh, to get as specific as possible? Again, we're going back to labels, but it's interesting. Yeah, I don't like labels that much, and I think a lot of people do associate being a libertarian with being an anarchist. And you know, I did flirt with the idea at some point in my life, saying, "Well, you know, this sounds like a nice thing. Maybe it's a uh, a good logical pro progression." And that whole path kind of like turned me the other way, more towards center, maybe. Um, so, so sometimes I just tell people that um, I'm a moderate. Um, I do like the the term classical liberal. I I'm a huge fan of uh, Jefferson. I'm a huge fan of the philosophy that you know he put down in the way of making decisions. And you know I think a lot of libertarians don't understand classical liberal philosophy. And I think that's a shame. I mean, I think you're exactly I right. I think you nailed it. And I, I I think they don't even know it underpins their own. Uh, their own ideology to say they don't know that it's rooted more so in logic and experience than it is in this uh, you know uh, this cult of personality that they adhere to they've, they've really gone far from the roots of classical liberalism I think you nailed it with that but I'm sorry I, I didn't mean to interrupt go ahead me, like, I'd say about like 80% of the news that I get is from reading The Economist and The Economist describes itself as a classical liberal newspaper and it's it's like a British classical liberal newspaper, which is basically like a Jefferson classical liberal. It's, uh, it is definitely more moderate, and they look at the data, and they look at the evidence. Um, a few weeks ago, they did an article you know, defending the cost-cutting of Obamacare, which is you know, shocking from what most people would see as like a right-leaning newspaper. You know, but the, their argument is, you know, if, if the empirical evidence is there, and if it's cuts out some of the waste that you know America has in its healthcare system, then maybe it's a good thing. And right. that's you know that's basically the, the Jefferson approach where, you know, you, you don't go to war if it benefits a small you know percentage of people in your society. But it is okay to go to war if it benefits everyone. It's like if your nation was your home and all the citizens were, you know, your family, then Sure, it's okay to defend your property, and that's you know the, the Jeffersonian approach, which uh, I definitely like more than this. Uh, a lot of libertarians now, you know, go on this like moral pontification about voluntary association and you know coercion and government force and things like this, which don't reflect much, I don't think, on reality, and I don't think it solves any problems. Right. And JW, I know you probably get asked this a lot, certainly as, you know, in math, but you advocate, you know, your economics and so on and so forth. And people probably ask you, oh, you, you know, and you tell them you're right, right. And I'm, but people generally ask, like, how do you explain it to people? Are you comfortable with just saying, oh, I'm a libertarian? Because everybody needs, and I know we don't like to label each other, but everybody, when you talk to somebody in common discourse, you need to label yourself somehow. You know, so how 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 do you do it? I I always hate to do it. I'm like I don't know. I I just don't really want to say it. So what do you what do you what do you say? Um, oftentimes I'll just say I have libertarian leanings, um, and they kind of understand what I mean by that. So that way they know I'm not full on libertarian or anything. But I'll say I'm. And sometimes I just tell them, you know I'm an economist. I uh, I look at things at how it affects the economy, and I make my choice that way. But most of the time, if someone just asks me, you know, like, what do you, what, what do you associate yourself with? I'll say, you know, I'm a libertarian leaning with maybe sometimes I'll say libertarian conservative. Um, and that usually lets them know kind of where I am on most issues. So. Okay. That's a good point. As soon as I say, oh, you know, I'm a libertarian, you're like, oh, cool. You support gay marriage and abortion and 
I'm like, well, I would vote for gay marriage, but not for the reasons you think. I'm like, I would, I, I hope, I would be like, well, I just want to see everybody get a tax break, and I, you know, but I go, I don't see why government needs to get involved in that. And then we get into the equality discussion, and I go, well, you don't really have a right to that. Then you got to get into natural law discussion, where these rights are derived. Are they derived from the Constitution? Are they derived from natural law? You can go on all day. So it's like, I don't even want to get involved in this right now, you know what I mean? So people have, like... They see a label, and this is the problem with labels. They see a label, they see a platform. They don't see any deeper thought. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I just believe, uh, you know, uh, in gay marriage because of a libertarian platform. Or, you know, it's always about a belief rather than actual critical thinking. And I think, I think, I think, the, I think, I think the analytical, go ahead. Go ahead. I think people do that, though. I, I saw someone on Facebook once say, um, you know, there's liberals and Republicans. I picked a team, so now I'm a liberal. And they just do whatever. I mean, I, I hope that's not common, but I think people do do that. They, they literally will just say, well, I'm a liberal, so I'm going to support everything they do. So when you do tell them when you're a liberal, they, they know exactly what you support in every situation because people don't think about the situation anymore. They just right. associate themselves I, with the team. So Right, and I don't know if you guys agree. If you ever watch Bill Maher, I, I can't stand that guy. Okay, Bill Maher is stupid. But at least he'll pull, call out Obama when he lied about if, you've had, if, you, if you like your plan, you can keep it. And he doesn't, like, generally just toe the line. I don't know if he does it to get viewers. I don't know what drives him. But at least sometimes he doesn't toe the entire platform, which I think a lot of people generally do. Um, I know liberals, they don't want to think. They just want the media and politicians to tell them how to think. And they just go at the easiest, like, the, literally the easiest answer that, that they can find that feels good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think, sometimes, I think that cross-sections with a lot of the anarcho-capitalists, too that just want to like feel good about what they say or repeat a mantra and kind of replace that with reason or logic. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to bring up? I got nothing. Before we, you got nothing? No. Well, before we, before we go, I just want to say that Jeffrey Tucker is going to be on next week so we can get into some of that anar anarchy stuff. So um, it's going to be cool. Um, also, Follow Grant. Can you tell me the name of the page again? I'm sorry. God damn it, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Look, even he remembers it. He he only heard it one time. The it was a modern libertarian. The modern libertarian. It is a really good page though, and all your work is there. Post that shit all over the head, a little conservative. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good though. I go, <laughs> I go there and I read your articles. They're all there. They're like poli sci or something ridiculous. You can't remember the name of a Facebook page. <laughs> I don't know why. I keep getting it confused. I have another friend who's a libertarian future, I think, and I get them all. He's libertarian this and that. I can't get it straight. So it's a great page, and all your work is there. Uh, viewing. Oh yeah, he's here. He's. He's a good guy, Jay. He runs that page. It's a good page, too, and he comes out with a lot of things. Him and I disagree on a lot of the libertarian points of view, but he's a really good guy, really smart. Um, but, Grant, your work is really good. I was reading some of it this week. Um, I took parts of it and put it into my essay for school and said that I wrote it. I hope you're okay with that. Oh, great. Uh, I mean, yeah, like I said, the yeah, your stuff's out there in the comments, so I figure I'll take it, and IP and everything doesn't exist, so you lose. Um... I also want to say follow the Analytical Conservative where you can see uh, Jay-Z, J.W., and myself post things. Also, where Luke Westman posts things. He's really good. Philosophy major, excellent. Um, and follow We Are Capitalists as well. Grant's other page. They do a great job. All their empirical work and their meme-making ability is second to none except for me. <clears throat> and um, uh, Unbiased America, which is also really good. And don't forget to... Uh, uh, tune in next week for Jeffrey Tucker. Bring your questions. It should be fun. Uh, thanks, guys. Jake Jake, and Jake. Uh, thanks for coming on last minute. That was great. And um, uh, we will see you guys next week. You guys will be on again, too, so we can discuss more things. And let's try to piss as many people off as we possibly can in between this Wednesday and next Wednesday on our pages. Sound like a plan? My goal is discrimination. Yeah. All right, cool. And in the meantime, let's also make fun of Kevin Ryan publicly wherever we can as well. Because he deserves it. And he tried to copy my haircut and my hair color, and I think that's weird. So. What haircut? I don't, I don't see anything. Yeah, it's, you can't see it in this light, but it's really very unique, and he's jealous, so I don't blame him. You got no soul. But, <laughs> you have to go for my haircut. 
Okay, that's, uh, I do it myself. Yours is pretty good. Yours is pretty good, Jacob. I'm not going to lie. Your hair is actually very wavy. I'm a little bit jealous. Mine's not that wavy. But that's next week... All natural. I'll, all natural, yeah. See, mine has a ton of gel. It's really artificial. So, But I'm going to get mine better than yours. I'm going to work at it. But thanks for, <laughs> thanks for coming on, guys. And uh, we'll do this again soon. Uh, have a good night. Yep. Bye, Francis McCluskey. Bye, Francis. Bye, Francis. Weird. <laughs> I love you. Bye.